All right, op two. So to create uh, op two, we create a new setup. Again, we start from the first tab and work our way down. So we go operation is turning or mill turn as that axis we define. Our origin is on the back. So we'll chuck that onto model front and then we'll just flip our Z axis by either selecting the front of it, which we need to be in this mode to do. Apparently, there we go. All right. So our Z is facing the correct orientation. Our datum or our work coordinate system is the front of the part. Looks good. Diameter 70, yep, uh, offset from the front. Because we parted it off, we can have zero offset on the front. What we should actually do is we'll go one millimeters. Okay, and then in our previous setup, we'll actually edit our part off and have it so we leave, we'll leave one millimeters on the front. So when it parts off, it actually leaves a bit of stock on the front. And then when we jump into this setup, we can define it the same. All right, actually what, because we've already turned the part to 65 mil, we can edit our setup, edit our stock and make it 65 mil. It'll be more accurate because we've turned all this in op one. All right. Very good. Everything else is pretty right. We don't need... Uh, we'll chuck sponge profile on. Okay. So I guess the first thing we want to do is you drill right up to this face. So we'll go drilling. We'll select our tool. We'll select our document that we have open. We will click the plus and then we want to go drill. All right, we have 40 mil U drill, so we'll go 40, and then the tip angle is 360. We'll go zero, uh, 180. So it's been a little while. All right, so because U drill say they they drill flat, as you're probably aware. All right, cutting data. No, we'll. I'm not real sure at the moment, but probably something like 100 meters a minute and 0.1 per rev will be good. Post processor, we'll give it a unique tool number, same as before. Accept that, select that. <clears throat> okay, our whole faces we want to drill, uh, we can either select that and it will drill to there, or we can select the back one. We can select anything we like. All right, so we'll select that one and then we jump into our heights tab because the drill is going to wrap it into this point and then start drilling and crash our, the, our machine. So we'll go into heights tab and then the top height, we will go selection and then just simply select the front and we'll give that an offset of one. So it will start drilling one meter out from the part and drill right to that, that, that floor. So we can go okay on that and we can simulate that. Very good. Oh, first thing, actually what we want to do is, is face our part. So we'll go turning face up the top here, select our tool, which we have created before. So we'll face with the 0.8 radius WNMG. Click select. That's all we need to do. And then click OK. Fusion smart enough to look at the part and know that that's, that's what we want to face. We can drag the facing tool path above the drilling tool path. Simulate that. So we're going to face the part. Drill the part. All right, we're ready to start boring the part out. So to do that, we go turning, profile roughing. So the profile roughing can either rough the inside or the outside of the part, 
or the face, I think. Maybe the face has its own one. No, I'm pretty sure it does the face as well. All right, so turning profile roughing. We want to select our tool. We want to create a tool under our mill turn training. We'll click the plus. We want to create a boring bar. Uh, insert, we can go a WNMG. WNMG, very good. Okay, in the holder, this is where we define our tool holder. So a 25 mil boring bar, shank width 20, yeah, so 20 by 20 boring bar, looks good. We don't really need to change anything, I don't believe. Leave this fees and fees for now, select that tool. Okay, so if we click OK now, what it's going to do is give us a sort of decent toolpath, but if we look, it is not ideal. So we'll face it, we'll drill it, and then boring. So it's boring from the center and gonna work its way up to the whole part. And then when it's finished, it'll drop back down to the center. Not good. So we can click close on that, and then let's start manipulating this toolpath. So we can go edit. Okay, so our geometry tab, we want to look from the front to the back. And because Fusion's smart enough to know where the model finishes, it'll only go to the geometry what it can, basically. It won't bore all the way to the back. All right, the radii. So what we're looking at here is the toolpath is looking from this inner diameter to the outer diameter. So what we need to do is change this inner radius because we've already drilled 40 mil diameter, we can actually change the inner radius to diameter and then chuck 40 in here. So it's looking from 40 mil out to the outside of the part, which is perfect. And then our clearance, so if we click, click play on that, um, accept on that, what it's going to do is a lot better job so we face it, we drill it, and then we start boring out. That looks good, good, very good. See how it's dropping back down to the center? It's all right in this instance, but sometimes if you're doing a finish pass, it will try and drop back down to the center and, and end up crashing your tool. So that is controlled. If we edit our tool path, jump into the radii tab, that's controlled by the clearance. So a lot of the time you get away with setting the clearance to diameter and 40 exactly the same as the inner radius. So if we click OK, you can see our toolpath will not go past the clearance, the clearance selection now. So we can simulate everything. A lot better. Okay, so that's roughed out the center. We'll just see what this warning is okay so the x clearance is is trimmed at the clearance radius so what that's saying in the the clearance radius for x i think if we can go 39 Ah, uh, oh, I know. So if, if we go a little bit more, more clearance, we should get rid of that alarm. Yes. So what that's saying is because we have we have X clearance of 0.6, it wants to go when it finishes the tool path. It wants to come down 0.6, and we only had we had no extra clearance. So. If you if you basically make your clearance diameter a little bit smaller than your inner radius, the tool can come in and, and drop down to the clearance radius and then out, and then it doesn't need to, to trim that clearance radius, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Okay, so 
we've roughed that out. So we want to do a finishing toolpath. We can go into turning, turning profile finishing. It knows that we want to keep that same tool, which is fine. So let's click OK. So now you'll get to see what I mean about the clearance, how it'll drop in and drop right down and crash the machine. We'll just skip forwards a bit. So we've finished finishing our tool path, our roughing. And then we're going to do a clean up pass. That looks all good until we get to the end and then bang, crashed. So what we can do, edit our tool path, go into our radio tab, and then again, change, change it to diameter and we'll go not 410, we'll go 40. And then the same thing again, we'll go 40. Okay. So now it's only going to come in and then go down to 40 mil diameter and then come out. So we should have a pretty good tool path now. Simulate it all. So we're going to face it. We're going to drill it. <clears throat> And rough it out. All looking good. No errors. And then we're going to finish it. And only drop down to 40. Looks good. Okay. We need to do a thread. So to do a thread, we would firstly just jump into design, click that feature, edit the feature, and just have a look what the thread is designated as. So it's an M50 by 1.5 pitch. So we will jump back into manufacture. We will go into a, oh, we'll go turning thread. We want to we'll select our tool. We will select the document that's open. We will click plus. We will do turn threading. Okay, the insert is a ISO insert. That's fine. Thread pitch we said was 1.5. The thread width will go three. All right, looks good. Now, uh, our tool, if we select accept on that and select, that is not the way our tool is facing at all. So we can go back to tool and go select, and then we can edit. We can select the document that's open, right click, edit our tool. Now we're going to set up and the orientation in the turret is that way. And then the insert, see how the insert is still facing the wrong way. So if we go into insert and actually change it to uh, somewhere in our holder. So in, in style, if we go face threading and then it orientates it the correct way. Okay, the cutting width, this is where we've got to play around a bit to, to get it all to look to look like what we want. So the cutting width we might go 22 just to just to bring it out of the shank. We'll go round shank. Uh, no we won't actually. So our shank Fusion does a pretty good job. If you click on them, it, it, it tells you what it's asking for. So if we got a 20 mil shank and the insert sticks out 2 mil, we'll go, we might just go 23. I don't have the actual tool in front of me, so it's a bit hard to tell at the moment. All right, that looks good, except that our insert is, is too long. It's sticking out the back here. So if we go into insert and then the overall length, we can make that 15. That looks a lot like it. It'll do for what we want to do anyway. And if we click internal thread, that uh, allows it to just do internal threads. All right, pretty good. We'll click accept on that, select on that. Now we have our tool. We can select going to geometry and select our thread faces. If we select OK, we should get a tool path. No, we don't. I think it's because, ah, oh, our turning mode, we need to go to inside threading. That is, is all. Okay, so see how it's going to drop down to the center of the part again. So we'll edit our tool path, go into radii tab, and then the clearance we'll just set to, we'll go 40, uh, 20, because it's radius. 
So 20 mil, and that will give us a good turn, a good threading toolpath. We can edit that toolpath, and then under passes, this is where we can sort of manipulate our threading toolpath. So we can go constant infeed, um, we can go alternate flanking, or we can go reduced infeed, all that sort of good stuff. The thread pitch, number of step downs, the thread depth, so we can go two mil, and it will go a lot deeper cut. We'll just leave it at one for now for training, and then okay. So we're pretty right for op two. Simulate that, facing, drilling, boring it out, rough rough bore, finish bore, and then the thread. Because because our tool hold our tool block is not modeled properly, it, it thinks it's gonna crash, but in actual fact it's fine. So don't get don't get too caught up about that. I just haven't actually modeled the holder correctly. We can make it a round shank, we can do lots of different things, but for all intensive purposes, that is it. I hope you learned something. Any questions, just ask me in WhatsApp and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. We'll just save that so you can get access to it and have a bit of a look tomorrow. Alright, hope you learned something.